you know, West Point has been it's home to me uh, very much for for both of us. I was uh, an Army brat there for four years. Then I went to West Point for three years as a cadet, and then after that, I was a company tactical officer and over a company of cadets for four years. Mm -hmm. And after that, we would make every one of our reunions and go back and <laughs> we went over as a unit. Normally the people uh, that go over to combat go over as individual replacements. They don't know their company. They haven't worked with them. They're at a disadvantage. We came over as a unit and that was so very important. Up until that time we were falling back, falling back because the Chinese were throwing in uh, hundreds of thousands of people, and they, uh, they were pushing us back. And uh, General Ridgway came in, and first thing he, he was told how all the plans they had for falling back, and he says, I want to see the plans for attacking, for getting uh, us going the other way. And uh, he came up with the final <laughs> solution was to take the 187th RCT, drop them, 15 miles behind the line of uh, the approaching line and having the, uh, support come up and, uh, and take us and uh, relieve us. And of course that, <laughs> that was looked on with a, <laughs> with a lot of skepticism, but <laughs> we, we went through it and we, that's, that was the time we turned the, Turning turned the war around. First platoon wasn't advancing the way I wanted and I had to go forward and, and push them or, and get, get things moving and everything. And I was heading in there and uh, a mortar fragment hit right in front of me and, uh, and it uh, wiped me out. <laughs> I was passed out uh, and uh, I can remember uh, uh, lying there and Sergeant Levodnik was the platoon uh, medic. When I was in my platoon and when I got to be company commander, I got him up as company medic. And I remember Sergeant Levodman over me and I, I was, had a chest wound, so I was breathing through my chest. And he, he put a, 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 a poncho. poncho there and wrapped around, around here and cranked my cartridge belt over to keep pressure on it and everything, and I could hear him talking about what he was doing to somebody else. And uh, I had an outer body movement and I was outside Experience. looking down. Experience. And I actually saw myself. And then I passed out, but Bob Nesbitt was a, uh, a replacement. Mm -hmm. He came in uh, through uh, Yong Dong Po, they call it uh, Repel Devil. And he was a replacement, and he was only there uh, for maybe three weeks before. Uh, and he uh, uh, he he was uh, he trained with trained before and trained with us for those three weeks. And then we had this big jump, and he was uh, a uh, a lead scout. And he was heading toward the objective with, with the platoon behind him, and we had put uh, a, a company on on either side, and we ran into some resistance, and our our uh, main uh, uh, operation uh, objective was further on, but we we were tied down here, and he was wounded out in front of his platoon, and I didn't know all the. The, the problems, I kept saying, let's go, move ahead, and so forth, and uh, I, uh, uh, I received word from the battalion commander that I had to disengage and get to my main unit. And he had pulled the company on my left out, so we were exposed there, so I had to get this guy to pull out, and I kept saying, pull out, and he said, we can't. Uh, we got somebody out in front, I said, go get him. And they didn't, uh, so I came up and I, I said, where, what, what's the problem? Okay, and there he is. They, we could see him out front. And I, 
So I yelled out, I said, okay, we need to have a, uh, a volunteer here to go out and get him. Uh, who's going out and everything? And I waited. <laughs> and no response. So I said, okay, anybody volunteering? I started taking off my, all my equipment because we had just jumped. And, and I, I got down to the phone and I told the old Wooly, I said, put down all that firepower. I said, I'm going to go get him, but we've got to move out. And so I ran out and just like you were in the uh, uh, in, uh, in a, uh, a rifle pit because of bang bang of all imagine. around you. Yeah. I had uh, three dashes and I got out to him and uh, I talked to him and he wasn't in pain. He had had, we found out later, the same type of wound I had, but he couldn't move. And I grabbed a hold of his ankle and tried to pull it and my grip wasn't, he was heavy, and my grip wasn't uh, good enough to hold on, so I took his cartridge belt, put it around his leg, twisted it, and put my arm in there. I don't know how I figured it out, but I figured it out. So if I pulled, it tightened up, and, and I just dragged him along, and his head must have been bouncing, but <laughs> I just made about four different stops real quick and I finally got them back and uh, we, we had a lot of firepower but um, we were lucky, we were just lucky behind, behind a, from one place to another.